Hey everyone, welcome to the next video in troubleshooting AKS. So today, what are we going to learn? Well, in today's lab, we are going to troubleshoot an application error. So before I start sharing my screen and take you through uh, the lab, let me take you through uh, how we are gonna do this. Well, we have already covered basics of the troubleshooting in previous videos. And today, what we're gonna do, we are going to deploy a very simple application with the front end and back end. Then, then we are going to introduce an error in the application. Okay, this is a very simple application with the front end and back end. When we put the data in, data inserted in the back end, and you can we can easily see from from the uh, browser. I'll I'll show you. And once we introduce the error in the application, then we'll find little glitch in the application, and then we are going to fix it. Since we know we have introduced the error, what is the fix? But there is another interesting point we'll discuss, which is the beauty of AKS, and we also call it self-healing. If we know this is the issue with the particular pod, we know how to get rid of that, and the replica set will help us to recreate that pod with the uh, usual configuration, which is working fine. Okay, so let's get started. Let me share my screen and start working on it. Okay, there we go. I hope you can see my screen now. Let's start. All right, I still have the same uh, AKS cluster, you can see. And now I am going to apply this YAML file, okay? This will create the front end and the back end. Now, if I see pods, I'll see we got three front end and we got three back end, as you can see right here, three front end and three, these are the back end for the redis that is our uh, db here okay so what we're gonna do now well we'll go ahead and check the service created for the front end application so that we can browse it right right here. this is our uh, public ip and this uh, yaml file and all you, you i I have not created it. I have borrowed it from the internet, from the GitHub. I'll share a link with you. Uh, it is available publicly and you can utilize the YAML file because I'm not a developer, I'm an architect. You know that I work with one of the best organization, uh, Rackspace, and I'm also certified trainer. You know that I'm MCT. So, I'm not a developer, so I don't develop these YAML files. And since that's not my forte, so I do not even spend my time there, though I find it very interesting. Uh, but for these kind of labs, I borrowed it from the GitHub. All right. So this is the very simple uh, application where if you type anything here, for example, we do test 01 and I submit, it'll start posing here, showing here. If I do test, zero two, you'll see it is there. If I do test zero three, you see it is there. So we can see it because it is coming from, from the database. And if I refresh it, it is still there, right? Now, let me go back to my AKS cluster. Let me clear this out. Now, this is a very simple lab to, to learn the steps of troubleshooting, okay? So what we're gonna do, because we know if we do kubectl get pods, 
uh, I have three front end pods and all these th three front end pods taking care of the traffic which is coming from the internet. If I browse, it will land in one of these uh, pods. So to introduce the uh, error and save time, let's get rid of two pods. Let it be a single one, which will cater the traffic or request. So let me do uh, scaling replicas it is scaling down replicas is equal to one where on the deployment which deployment front-end deployment it's simple if i have not made any spelling mistake wonderful now if i do pods we have only one front end and two are terminating okay so this is our part so let's get and introduce an error inside this port and how can we do that we need to exec inside the port so what's the command it's kubectl exec it and we need to provide the pod name right here and let's let's do bash so i'll be inside the uh pod now you can see right here we are inside the pod and now what i need to do let me as always we need let's try to update it and then we'll install vim why we need vim because we need to manipulate or introduce an error in the dot uh, php for this application okay so as soon as it's updated we'll install uh vim apt install vim now it's installing vim and vim is our editor uh, we all know that and people who are uh, not uh, from linux background they 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 could simply follow me how i'm doing vim is editor in linux just like we have notepad and notepad plus plus but it's linux so it would be little you know command oriented you need to push some buttons to work on it all right so uh me too belongs to the uh windows background but i learned few basics of the linux so that i could take care of these open source technologies, which is uh, more of a Linux oriented, that's what I found, but it's not necessary or mandatory that you should know uh, Linux, you should be the Linux champ to learn these things, you should know the basic Linux that would be good enough. All right, so um, I have Vim now, let me open this file, PHP in Vim. And now I'm going to introduce the error by adding a little bit of code. Uh, and when you when you open things in Vim, you need to either press I or insert so that you can edit it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a few commands here, which will help me to introduce error. And this is a very interesting error. That's why, that's why I chose it. And I'll show you why. Okay, now what we need to do, we need to go back and I can uh, let it be, it's fine. We can exit out later or we can come here and add, let me refresh it once if it's working fine. Let me do test zero test zero four. Oh, come on, test zero four. And it is getting in, right? So you must be wondering, where is the error? He just added a junk of code. Uh, it doesn't seem to be error. Well, there is your error. You see everything is here, but this is in this particular session. If you refresh it, you see the test four and five has lost it did not get into the database so it's not visible here so this is a very uncommon error we usually do not find but you know this is an error right and this is such such kind of error can easily be uh, passed through the qa right uh, but now what can we do right 
the very very first thing uh, we can simply go ahead and read the logs. I mean, I I, I showed you how to read the logs in the previous uh, videos. So let me go ahead and do that. We can exit out of here, and we can simply do kubectl logs, logs of whom, logs of that. Uh, uh, pod which is running at the back end okay simply come here paste it okay and if you do hyphen f it will show you the live feed of the logs so these are the logs you can simply see i'm not able to see much here you can grab it how could you grab it you can grab with it with the data with that we are trying to insert like test and all if i do grab uh let me do test okay it grabbed the test we see test one two three four and then the five these are the uh messages that we are trying to insert so now we can see it is there and at what time it's 26 right 2021 14 july 26 and you can easily see in the main log right here now we can see there is this error which says uh let me highlight it uh where is the draw option ding, 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 ding. it says host name at the beginning of set command is local host cmd uh we can we can simply see When you, when you see the entry host name at the beginning of set command localhost, you know that the error is uh, between this line and the start of the client. So the setting of uh, host is equal to localhost must be offending error, right? So if you remember what I entered there, it was the same code which states the same thing, right? So anyways, we are not, learning the code here or the yaml file the point is there is this uh, replica uh, uh, pod where something got messed up and our application is not inserting the messages in the database through the logs we can easily find out where is the error and we can try to fix it or the best option is the beauty of uh, Kubernetes is, let me show you. It is very simple. What you need to do, you need to do kubectl delete pod. Which pod? This one. Now, once you delete this pod, because we know something is wrong with this particular pod, it will be gone and will be back to the same or the old or the working configuration that we already had previously when we ran this yaml file so it is running now if i do test 04 submit test 05 submit and i refresh we see everything is getting into the database or stored so there are like two ways of uh, solving this kind of problem okay uh, this kind of bug you can either navigate into the pod and make the code changes the way i introduced it but we introduce it for the sake of testing troubleshooting understanding or you can ask kubernetes to give us a healthy new pod and remember it is not recommended it is not at all recommended to make manual changes to pod so that's why it is always best what we did okay and this is this is this is this is it this is all uh, the lab that i wanted to show you and there are like few points i would like to summarize at the end what we did well errors can come in any uh, shape and form the way we introduce it and most of the errors encountered by the deployment team are configuration issues okay something is messed up with the configuration so you got to use a log to identify the root cause uh, 
and kubectl exec is the command by which you can get inside the container for the debugging uh, strategy, but it is not always recommended uh, because broadly allowing kubectl exec in a, is a serious security risk as it lets Kubernetes uh, operator execute commands directly in the pod they have access to, which is not at all recommended. So uh, once you have the healthy pod running, just remove the uh, shitty pod and Kubernetes will take care because it will deploy the new one with the help of replica set. Well, thank you for watching. You have a good day and uh, take care. Bye.